Hello once again everyone, it's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, the Wednesday evening edition. Well, Gloom City once again across the area today with a slate gray overcast and a little drizzle and a few snowflakes from time to time and uh, just kind of yuck. But hey, it's January, we're going to have days like this. 47 mile per hour gust is where we peaked at the airport today after 52 yesterday. Uh, another very blustery day out there today with uh, winds routinely gusting over 30 miles per hour and occasionally we spiked up into the 40s. Uh, still a little breezy this evening, although the wind will diminish some as we head through the overnight. The radar as of 7 o'clock is pretty quiet. Now, there can be some bits of drizzle and a few snowflakes out there for tonight. Not really a big deal in most circumstances, but I can't rule out maybe a couple of colder surfaces. You know, think railings and maybe some sidewalks here and there. I can't rule out if you get a little drizzle and it's 31 or 32, maybe there's a little glaze of ice, but it's a it's a low chance thing, not something that I think a lot of us have to worry about. In the meantime, uh, the radar is going to look a lot different at this time Friday evening across the Midwest. Tomorrow's system that will impact us is out here. The big blockbuster Great Lakes and Midwest storm for Friday and Saturday really hasn't even formed yet. It'll get its act together out here across the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma by tomorrow night and into Friday morning. Now out ahead of that blockbuster storm, already winter storm watches have been issued for a good chunk of lower Michigan, the Chicago area, Milwaukee, Green Bay, back towards Iowa. In fact, the entire state of Iowa is under some sort of winter alert, <clears throat> and most of that has to do with what's coming their way by late Thursday night and into Friday. For us, across eastern Ohio and western PA, we get clipped by this little fast-moving system tomorrow. Now. This could lead to a little coating of snow in a couple of spots before the morning is through, but again, not something I think a lot of us have to worry about. The afternoon, I think, will be kind of similar to today. Um, a lot of clouds, maybe a snow flurry, maybe even a little drizzle. You know, we're going to have a hard time, I think, forming snowflakes in a lot of the area tomorrow afternoon. What I mean by that is there's a layer of air that snowflakes like to form in, certain temperatures. Basically, in terms of Celsius, it's kind of minus 10 to minus 20. It's in that area where snowflakes most efficiently form. If you have a lot of dry air up in the cloud layer at those specific temperatures in that range from minus 10 to minus 20 Celsius, you have a hard time uh, forming snowflakes. And so if precipitation falls, it's more likely to be some drizzle in those kinds of situations. And I think we'll see a, that kind of situation again tomorrow afternoon. Either way, all low impact stuff, just kind of a gloomy day. Let's talk about Friday and Saturday. We start out dry Friday, but by late afternoon, early evening, we're talking about, you know, four, five, six o'clock. I think that uh, precipitation is going to push in. And the question will be, what precipitation type will we see? I think it's going to be a mixed bag. I think as the precipitation pushes in, temperatures are going to be mostly in the middle and in some places upper 30s. I think we're going to see some raindrops. I think there'll be some snowflakes mixed in. Might there be a small slushy accumulation of snow quickly Friday evening? Yes, I think the best chances of that are north of I-80 and especially up towards I-90 up towards the Lake Erie shoreline. I think for most of us, the snow is not going to be much of a thing late Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Even if you get a small slushy accumulation, it's going to get washed away pretty quickly by rain for the rest of the evening. Now, the rain will probably taper off to scattered showers overnight. This whole sequence bears a lot of similarities to what we had yesterday, except that was morning and midday. This is evening into the overnight. There's our dry slot. And then as the low wraps up and starts heading to the north and east, uh, we get into the uh, kind of a backlash uh, snow or wraparound snow, if you will, on Saturday. And this is going to be just a nasty day Saturday. It's going to be windy just like the last couple of days. Uh, as the colder air wraps in, there's going to be snow showers. Temperatures are going to settle into the 20s. The air that comes in behind this system, much, much colder than the one we've been dealing with during the middle of the week. So could the snow add up and accumulate a little bit on Saturday? I think that's possible. I think that uh, some of us might even see an inch or two in those kind of scattered snow showers on Saturday. As early as Friday evening, the wind is going to become a story again. There could be some gusts up to 40 Friday evening. The windiest period is probably Saturday, though. As we get into the midday hours, especially, uh, some mottled wind gusts right now are you know topping out 45, even 50 miles per hour. Uh, this will be at least a wind advisory, if not a high wind warning issued by the Weather Service for much of the area uh, for Friday night and especially into the day on Saturday. Uh, as far as the snow expectations here locally, now the uh, midday run of the GFS is definitely an outlier. Most of our modeling suggests that we are under an inch worth of snow from Friday evening all the way through Saturday night. 
Um, I think some places might try to get a little bit more than that on Saturday, but generally speaking, of course, we're far from the, the bullseye here. Uh, there's going to be some 12-inch amounts pretty common in a lot of lower Michigan, even back towards Chicago, up towards the Toronto area. Uh, in northwest Ohio, Toledo is going to be right on the edge. Certainly a lot more north and west of there, a lot less south and east of Toledo. Um, and over to our north and east, up in the lake effect areas, there's going to be some lake effect snow that develops late Friday night into Saturday. So a healthy accumulating uh, snow event for Jamestown, New York. Maybe as far south and west as Erie, PA as well. But in our TV markets, this is a look at our TV market. If you're a, a YouTube viewer of mine and you don't, you're not familiar with the Youngstown area, you don't watch me on TV, we basically cover a five-county area right on the border between Ohio and Pennsylvania. And in that specific location, you know, again, a small slushy accumulation early Friday evening, possible. Um, but an inch or two, at most three, um, I think uh, can occur on Saturday with that wraparound snow shower activity and temperatures ending up in the 20s. Here's a map that's going to look a lot different about 10 days from now. Ice coverage on the Great Lakes. There's basically zero on Lake Erie. And for the Great Lakes as a whole, all five lakes, there's only 1% ice coverage at this point. And, you know, it's January the 10th. That's pretty remarkable. In fact, it's pretty much a record. Here's a look at this year's ice coverage. The red line is normal. All the lighter blue lines, historical years dating back to 1973, so basically the last 50 years. You know, there's been, there's been years where by this point in January, we're up here, 40, 50% ice coverage on, on the Great Lakes. Uh, right now, it's basically 1% near a record low or at a record low. But I would expect this line to start trending upwards as Arctic air settles over the region starting this weekend. It is a mortal lock that we will be below the average, not only locally, but in most of the country east of the Rockies from this weekend through next week. This will be the coldest and longest stretch of weather we've had in about two years across the area. Uh, the absolute temperatures won't be as cold as Christmas time last winter, but that was only one or two days. This is seven or eight or even nine or ten days. In fact, today's big number, I made it a round number. It's not going to be exactly right, but we'll be around 200 hours consecutively of below freezing temperatures. Could be 220, 225 if we string together 10 days in a row worth of sub-freezing temperatures. So once we drop below 32 at around daybreak on Saturday, I don't think we see 32 again until probably beyond the following weekend. Now this pattern... Of course, it's going to be cold. That's a lock next week. What about snow? You know, I don't foresee uh, this being an exceptionally snowy pattern for us. Um, the Arctic air mass is going to suppress the storm track some. So here's our Friday-Saturday storm. We get the backlash snows, snow shower activity anyway, late Friday night into Saturday. Then this becomes more lake effect for Sunday up towards Buffalo and into upstate New York. Then this is the next thing we'll be keeping an eye on. It's the middle of next week. This is the European model. And it's the most aggressive model with this uh, potential East Coast snow, but even it is not particularly uh, robust, at least its current run. It would suggest that some accumulating snow can occur middle of next week, specifically right around Tuesday for Philadelphia, Baltimore, places like that. And taken literally, we'd be right on the edges of this. But again, this is probably the snowiest model we have available to us right now. A lot of the modeling just basically says we get nothing out of this. Either way, I don't think it's a big deal for us, per se. And then beyond that, the rest of next week is probably just cold and dry. Um, maybe a touch of snow, maybe a couple of lake effect events, primarily northwest PA, southwest New York, and maybe at the end of next week there's a little wave that comes across. But there's nothing to suggest right now that we've got some sort of blockbuster snow event coming anytime over the next 10 days. But we do have a heck of a lot of cold coming our way starting this weekend. We'll talk more about the weekend and beyond, of course, in future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Follow me on all the social media outlets. Make sure you subscribe to me and get notifications on YouTube. Thanks for watching tonight. I'll see you back here on Thursday.